Welcome back to the comments section. I'm Brett Cooper. You know, I kind of have to change the tone here because I'm going to talk about one of my very favorite actresses today who has let me down in a way, and it's very conflicting. I love Jennifer Lawrence, and I know that she gets hate. I know that people, you know, don't like her. They don't think that she's a good actress. I think that she is solid. Her breakout role, Winter's Bone, was incredible. It was a great, really gritty, independent film. I think she is stunning. I've always thought that she was really grounded and witty and just very true to herself. When she was doing Hunger Games, I believe it was on record that she was a Republican, which I always was like, oh, that's kind of cool. It wasn't even political at the time that Hunger Games came out, but I just, I admired the roles that she picked. They were always really strong characters. She was always gritty. And so both as like a person looking up to, you know, a celebrity when you were younger and as a young actor, there was just a lot that I admired about her. She just did her fourth cover with Vogue and she is one of the only actresses who has made it on the cover four times. The photos are beautiful. They're very cool. She just had her first child. So she's been talking a lot about motherhood and you know what that means. And she married a non-celebrity and her, you know, their quiet life now. And I like it all. It's very cool. But now she has kind of been eaten up and absorbed by the Hollywood elites. That should not be surprising to any of us. It's kind of sad to me, but you know, it happens. And so obviously in this cover shoot for Vogue with the article that was written about her, the conversation immediately turned to politics, more specifically Roe v. Wade. But before we get into it, make sure that you like this video, subscribe to this channel and ring that notification bell. And if you have not already, go to dailywire.com slash Brett to check out my merch collection and to enter my giveaway. It ends September 12th. You will have the chance to hang out with me over a Zoom call. And if you win, this is my favorite part, you will receive uh, one of these signed, unique, one-of-a-kind Polaroids from some of my photo shoots in the mail, probably with some other goodies. Uh, I think it'll be super fun. I hope you all enter. Again, it is open until September 12th, so go do it. It is totally free. Back to Jennifer Lawrence, letting me down <laughs> in her entire cover piece, which was very long, and a lot of it I really enjoyed. It was very nice, all of her humor. This is the paragraph that has gotten her trending and that has people's attention across all political aisles. Much of her disappointment was directed at certain relatives back in Louisville, Kentucky, where she'd grown up, including her father. The 2016 election had torn open a rift in her family. Repairing it was an ongoing process. Particularly since having a baby, she had been trying to heal. She even discussed with her therapist the recurring nightmare she has about Tucker Carlson. This is literally like content for a sitcom. Jennifer, if you are having that much trouble sleeping, I think you need some Bond Charge sleep masks. Now, historically, I have hated sleep masks. I feel so claustrophobic. I feel like they get all over my face. Bond Charge's sleep masks are not like that at all. They are designed to be comfortable and plush and they help you sleep better. And this is just one of their products that is aimed to help you optimize your life. Their wide array of products help you recover faster, reduce inflammation, balance your hormones, reduce migraines, reduce eye strain. You name it, they have a product for you. If you want to check them out, go to bondcharge.com slash cooper for 20% off your order. Again, that is bondcharge.com slash cooper. And to be honest, with all of the trauma that Jennifer Lawrence went through during those four years of Trump, she probably needs some of these Bond Charge products because she continues on and she says, I just worked so hard in the last five years to forgive my dad and my family and try to understand. It's different. The information they are getting is different. Their life is different. Lawrence had a haunted look in her eyes. She would stop at times to apologize or make a self-deprecating joke and then get visibly overtaken by emotion again. I felt like I was watching a real life version of whatever it is that happens when she acts. I've tried to get over it and I really can't. I can't. I'm sorry, I'm just unleashing, but I can't <laughs> with people who are not political. You live in the United States of America. You have to be political. It is too dire. Politics are killing people. What? Why? Why? Like, okay, so the writer hit on a very important note when she said that she felt like she was watching a real life version of whatever it is that happens when she acts. This is an act. Obviously, Jennifer Lawrence has gotten swept up into the hysteria and all of the emotions on the left, the progressive, the wokeness, all of that. And she is putting on this act of, you know, political theater. We have to, people are dying. In Hollywood, it's kind of like a rite of passage to become this, you know, political figure, an activist. And this is Jennifer Lawrence's moment. She's stepping into it. Oh, heaving over, you know, people are dying. No, abortion being banned in some states is not making people die. It is actually saving lives. And that whole line about you live in the United States of America, you have to be political, it's too dire. There are other countries where it is more dire. 
where you could not even say some of the things that you are saying about this country. And you know, I respect your freedom of speech. You can say whatever you want. You can hate this country, but do not say that people are dying because of your government's oppression. No, that's happening in other countries. So be grateful. It also is just peak Trump derangement syndrome with the like, oh, 2016, I'm not over it. I'm like, I'm trying to heal. And my parents are, you know, they're still, you know, Republicans. Let it go. This whole paragraph is also just peak Trump derangement syndrome. I mean, he lives rent free in their heads. It's 2022 and she is still trying to heal from 2016 and the audacity that members of her family voted for him. You know, most of my family voted for Hillary and then voted for Biden. And you know what? I'm over it. I do not care. It is okay to move on with your life because reflecting on that does nothing but make you miserable and mess up your life. So move on. I don't really know if she has the capacity because literally two lines later, she calls Trump and his policies a jar of mayonnaise. What? That's an interesting one. I happen to like mayonnaise, so I'm not offended by that, but it's just, it's just ridiculous. People online are not enthused by this cover piece for many reasons. Some people think that the photos are not fantastic. She's not talking about acting enough. People are just not pleased and not enjoying the fake bravada of her political activism. Like somebody said, be political, but only agree with my politics. Somebody else said, thank you, celebrity. I will keep that in mind. Another person said, agree with my political views and don't get mad when I bash yours. Uh, another one, the irony, you have to be political. It's too dire. Politics are killing people. Yes, abortion kills people. Like I said, it's just a bit silly. But of course, obviously, you can't please everyone. Some people wanted her to be more extreme. Somebody said, white people are so tiring. Y'all only speak up when it affects you. I'm here for what she said. Politics is killing people, but it's been killing people, especially black and brown people. Yet that wasn't enough. It's sad. Fam, she's on your side. She's doing your activism. Calm down again. You will be a lot happier if you try to find the good in some situations. Occupy Democrats obviously had a reaction. They are my favorite Twitter account that I cannot believe is not satire, but they said breaking. Mega actress Jennifer Lawrence reveals that she had a falling out with her Republican family over appealing Roe and asks how they could raise a daughter and not think that she deserves equality. Also says that she had nightmares about Tucker Carlson. Retweet to thank her for speaking out. No, I'm not going to retweet that. I don't really care. And I mean, the irony, guys, her parents raised a daughter that they did not abort. She also has so much equality. She was raised in a small town outside of Louisville, Kentucky. She came from nothing. She was discovered on the streets of New York City, literally, and is now a mega actress. You could not do that in other countries. Tucker was also quick to the punch and immediately had a response for her on his show last night. When you decide to work in television, you lose control of a lot of things, foremost the way other people perceive you. So can it really be your fault? Are you really responsible if major Hollywood starlets dream about you? Maybe it's the sexy glasses. Who knows, we can only speculate. Trace Gallagher has the details for us though tonight. <laughs> Yeah, and just so you get the total dichotomy of this, Tucker, it's important to note that while Jennifer Lawrence sees you in her head at night, you know, the nightmares when she sleeps, she's likely not watching you now, but her parents are probably watching you because they're fans. It's different. The information they're getting is different. Their life is different. That line is just so elitist. Their life is different. Like, they're not like me. They don't live in New York City. They don't have a home in L.A. They're just in Kentucky. Like that attitude is so backwards that because people come from a more rural town, because they have a different upbringing, that their opinions are not valid. It's just ridiculous. And especially since she comes from that stock, she is from Kentucky. Jennifer, you are not better than them at all. You just happen to get discovered. That's it. We're gonna continue on, but I just wanted to make that point. Okay. As for her Tucker Carlson tonight mares, <laughs> They likely stem from a 2017 segment where you joked that she had Trump derangement syndrome. She and where does. several media outlets said that she blamed Trump for a series of 2017 hurricanes. Now, remember this. She was taken, she says, grossly out of context. Shortly after she said Trump would be the end of the world and that Trump was a jar of mayonnaise, she went on to say in a 2016 interview with a British television station that the election was, quote, startling. And quoting here, 
You know you're watching these hurricanes now, and it's really hard not to feel Mother Nature's rage and wrath. So it's just, she says she has nightmares about us. That's what they're calling it now. Nightmares. Yeah. All right, we're flattered. I literally love him. And you know, that point that he made at the beginning, when you do become a public figure, whether you are on TV, whether you do this kind of show, whether you're just like an influencer on social media, you do lose control over other people's perception of you. And really every day in the real world, you cannot control what anybody thinks about you, but especially when you're this public. So I appreciate the fact that he's not offended and Jennifer Lawrence should not be offended that people are gonna be upset with her about that. It's just kind of how the world works. And you know, I have the freedom to still believe that she's stunning and that she's a fantastic actress and I definitely will go see her movies. Like this is somebody that I really do wanna try and separate the artist, you know, from their activism, but it's hard, man. <laughs> Sometimes you just have to laugh, I guess. Do you want to be the only person not caught up on the internet's latest news? I didn't think so. So make sure you're subscribed and ring that bell so you never miss an episode.